Since ancient times, man has been intrigued by the idea of repairing the broken or damaged body parts. And science fiction has been fueling our imagination in integrating or upgrading our human body with technology. Take the 70s TV shows featuring Steve Austin, the six million dollar man, or Jamie Summers, the bionic woman, both bionically repaired or rebuilt thanks to technology. So the idea to integrate technology within the body has been fueling science fiction for decades. But until recently, the technologies we've been developing have poorly fitted our human body. And this is extremely challenging. So what I, when I imagine the future, what I see is that instead of, I, of having humans becoming machines, I see machines becoming more human-like. What I envision is a world where the hard technologies merge together with our soft structure so that we can have better prosthetic treatment. But this is extremely challenging. Let me give you one of the reasons. The human body is a formidable mechanical work of art. We're the ultimate machine. We're capable of an enormous amount of fluid movement patterns. Think of a ballerina. But also during our daily routine, our very own spinal cord expands, contracts many times without difficulty. In contrast, take some of our most advanced machines, the mobile phone. This is bulky, rigid, and overall quite fragile. Who has not had the shattered screen by dropping their phone on the floor? So in order to benefit fully from technology in helping us living better, healthier lives, we need to create new, flexible, tissue-like machines. And this is not quite science fiction. In fact, it has already started. This is a cochlear implant. Nearly 5% of the world population suffers from hearing losses. Even babies, children can have hearing impairment due to genetic condition, complication of childbirth, or infectious disease like chronic ear infection. The cochlear implant uses tiny, flexible electrodes that are surgically inserted in the cochlea. The cochlea is the little snail-like cavity in our ear. The electrodes deliver very precisely along the auditory nerve electrical pulses that encode sound frequencies. So today, babies who are born deaf can overcome their disability and uh, spend and live normal lives. The cochlear implant is not a new technology. Its clinical use was approved in the 80s. But the important parameter here is that this is one of the first evidence that the shape of the machine matters. Accessing the cochlea is just the beginning. Many more medical conditions could benefit from machines that can mimic the shape, the softness, and the function of the nervous system and establish good dialogue with it. So how do we go about manufacturing, designing, and using soft machines? This is not an easy task and certainly not a single-person job. I am a neurotechnologist working in a multidisciplinary team. I work daily with engineers, medical doctors, neuroscientists, and neurosurgeons. I focus on designing and defining the physical and functional property the machine should have so that it can live within the body, establish a reliable communication link with it, and also maintain that communication link over time or as long as we need it. The primary material we use is silicone rubber. This is soft, it can stretch to twice its length, so it can accommodate easily the movement of the human body. The challenge comes into integrating the electronic materials. Electronic materials are hard, but they're also often brittle. They crack at extremely minute strains. 
So how can we marry two classes of materials that are so different? By engineering elasticity in the very electronic materials. So to do this, we use extremely thin films so that they become flexible. We also induce microstructures, tiny microcuts distributed randomly throughout the material so that on the macro scale, it can stretch reversibly like an accordion and yet maintain its electrical properties. And third, we select fabrication processes that are compatible with the temperature needed for or allowed by the soft silicone material. This video shows a stretchable thin gold film embedded in silicone rubber. It can stretch once or even a million times to a thief to half of its length, and it does not lose ele its electrical conduction. This second movie displays an array of light-emitting diodes connected with stretchable feed metal film. So today, it's possible to make electronic circuits that we can deform on demand. Now, we have the machine now, we have the soft machines, but will it help the injured nervous system? So to get, together with my colleague, Grégoire Hortin, we've teamed up and tested a soft implantable machine to help paralyzed rat walk again. We inserted the soft machine at the very surface of the spinal cord so that it can move together with the underlying tissue. We later called our soft machine Edura for electronic duramata because the format and the compliance of our implant is nearly the same as the biological duramata. The implant or the soft machine delivers minute amount of drugs and streams of electrical pulses so that we can reactivate the spinal tissues that are separated from the brain because of the injury, thereby promoting locomotion in the limbs in the paralyzed rat. This is a first step, but an important one. We've just demonstrated that softness, that soft technology, allows us to have biointegration and efficient dialogue with the spinal cord. So we're, today we're gathering important information or indications that soft machine may be part or may play an important role in the design of tomorrow's long-term therapeutic solution. So in the not so far future, soft machine will help us develop innovative diagnostic and treat a wide range of neurological disease and trauma. Paralyzed individual may be able to walk again thanks to a soft machine delivering adequate stimulation to the spinal cord. But a soft machine can also help treating associated dysfunction like incontinence. An amputee may be able to naturally control a prosthetic hand and feel a handshake, just thanks to a soft machine integrated with the nerves in its remaining arm. In the future, I see we will be able to provide more personalized and life-changing therapies based on soft electronic machines. So rather than humans becoming machines, machines will help us continue being humans. Thank you.